Hey everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Jonathan. Hello. Howdy. How's it going? It's going. It's it's going. You know, it's it's like uh slushing outside right now. So it's the not quite rain, not quite snow. Um, you know, just sounds horrible. Yeah, it's it's, it's fantastic. Um, 77 degrees outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> well like for, i was thinking about dipping in the pool during yeah that, so. yeah yeah anywho uh for folks that don't know you jonathan who are you where are you don't want to hear it in detail just generally where are you and then what do you do uh, i'm jonathan weaver i am in davenport florida which is a suburb of orlando um recent transplant from kansas city so lifelong kansas city resident chiefs fan you know taylor swift fan football. as well I mean, why not? <laughs> I enjoy all the memes, at least. Yes, yes. Um, and so I have a day job. I work for the water district in Kansas City, um, 100% remote. And uh, I am the SharePoint power platform for them. And then... Oh, hang on, hang on. I lost your video. Lost my video. Gosh. Amazing that we can edit. I'll let, right. Yeah, I'll let you start over with your introduction. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just switch to the other camera. Okay. If it'll let me. This is what happened last time, and then Zoom died. And was, it the, up... was it the camera? Is it the PC? I, I have no idea. There you go. Okay, so I'm down here now, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that just means I have to lean forward in my chair instead of leaning is back it, in. The chair. Is it not a laptop? Yeah, that's right. I so I do the same thing. Like I'm I'm leaning forward now, and I find I keep hunching because of that. But right. it's all Sharon. Good. Sharon made the joke that when I I like to lean back in my chair, but then if I'm on this camera, it looks like that meme of the guy with the Cheetos pounding yeah. on it. <laughs> so again, so uh, start over again. Like, who are you? Where are you? And, and what do you do? All right. Hi, I'm Jonathan Weaver. I'm in Davenport, Florida, which is a uh, suburb of Orlando. And uh, during my day job, I work for the Water District in Kansas City, um, Johnson it's County. Commute. It's a long commute. Yeah, it is um, all the way up to my desk in the <laughs> second floor of the house. Yeah, um, I am the SharePoint Power Platform developer for the Water District. Uh, and then in my spare time, I am a contractor for Smarter Consulting. And I, I know you've been, so I, Jonathan and I have known each other for a while. And uh, so as, as with Sharon as well, his, his wife, who's an MVP and RD, and Sharon and I have been doing a lot of stuff, side projects together, doing stuff in the community. Jonathan is also a newer member of the M365 AMA crew. So uh, always glad to have you some great discussions there. Uh, You've so, been on two or three of, of those sessions. Yes. And uh, a, a brand spanking new MVP. Congratulations for that. Thank you. You had your freak out more moment getting the, the email? I did because, you know, I'm used to looking on the first of the month to see if it's there. And I woke up and looked at my phone at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning and there's just a little outlook message and i'm like okay what did i get during the night and it says we'd like to congratulate you on becoming an mvp and i'm like this is like the ninth of the month or sixth. right it was the eighth or ninth right yeah it was late yeah yeah, yeah. and i was like and, and i just literally stood there staring at my phone like am i still asleep am i awake <laughs> am i reading this correctly mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, yeah. So that was the that was January. So just a couple of weeks ago. I always like to ask, uh, you know, to talk about the origin story of your MVP. I mean, uh, again, having your your wife's been in the program for years, been involved in doing this stuff. You've been in this space. Um, so I mean, be be honest. How much of uh, you know Sharon's uh, community activities? Like, have you really been supporting? Have you been carrying her all this time? 
<laughs> right. She's not in the so, room, is she? <laughs> she is not in the room. Okay. Oh yeah, tell us the but truth. She will, she will watch this video at yeah. some point. Um, no, actually, so it, it's interesting. So she got into the SharePoint space before I did. And I was actually a software tester. So I was doing QA and I was doing automation, automation workflows. Mm -hmm. And Sharon would kept telling me, you need to check out SharePoint. You need to check out SharePoint, SharePoint designer workflows. You'd be a great fit for this. It's what, how you think it's what you do. And I resisted it for a long time. And she literally dragged me kicking and screaming into the SharePoint world in general. And it was because one day she, she and another, another, uh, SharePoint person were working on a workflow and they needed my logic brain to help them figure out the logic in the workflow. And from that point on, I kind of got hooked into SharePoint designer and the logic of the workflows and building out workflows. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I started, I, I found my little niche. And when she would go, she would submit to speak at a conference at a SharePoint Saturday, I would also submit to speak. And so my first speaking session was in 2016 at SharePoint Saturday, St. Louis. Uh, and I did SharePoint designer or no SharePoint uh, calculated columns uh, doing the if statements. And I was teaching nested ifs and how to get around the seven. You can only go seven levels deep on a nested if statement. Mm -hmm. And that was my first session that I presented that same day. I watched Becky Bertram present this brand new thing called Power Apps and Power and Flow. And it was a one hour session and she did 30 minutes of each. And I I got hooked and I went back and I started working on on Power Apps and uh, and Flow at the time, which is now obviously Power Automate. And uh, and then from there I just started I started presenting things. I was I kept my calculated column session. But I would add on like an intro to Power Apps and intro to to Flow sessions and started presenting those at other conferences. And it, it worked out well because Sharon was was definitely in the, the upswing of her career from the community perspective. And so she was going to a lot of conferences and I was like I was tagging along on some of them as the plus one. Uh, but at some I would be I would be selected to present my session. Mm -hmm. And so I was I was actually getting well into the into the community at the time. Um, considered the MVP, but you know, there's that whole I'm brand new and I'm looking at all these other people who are amazing and wonderful. And I'm meeting people who I see on Twitter, which at the time to me that meant they were, you know, godlike, hmm. right? Um, and I got to I got to present at at uh, Twin Cities which is like the largest SharePoint Saturday in the world or something. At least and in the U S right now. In the U S maybe. Yeah. And this was back, this was well prior to COVID probably 2018 ish. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I, I think that was the first time I actually knew who you were. You had the, the camera, you were running around with the camera and uh, doing little, always, always the case. I'm right. pretty sure I met you before that, you, but it might've been casually. Yeah. yeah. Well, you met me, so we started running SharePoint Saturday Kansas City in 2013, and you were one of our keynotes at our the first one that we ran. So we met our we met each other there, but I didn't have a clue who any of y'all were. Yeah, we had you people like you and Naomi Moneypenny, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, folks don't and, know Naomi. She's now a central figure in the AI ML world at Microsoft now. Right. So she's a former MVP. We had had these big names that I had no idea who any of y'all were. I mm -hmm. still thought SharePoint was just a wiki at that point. So, um, so yeah, we we sorry I'll, to make a short story longer. Mm -hmm. um, Sharon had has been big in the community, and I get to tag along as much as as possible. But I have always had the day job, and the day job was not supportive of the consistent travel. Um, the additional responsibilities that would have that would have come with, or the, not necessarily responsibilities, but opportunities mm -hmm. that would have come with be, being an MVP at the time. Um, and I also was was dealing with just some career growth at this at that 
point, you know, between, you know, about 18, 2018 to 2022, that whole time I was dealing with this new job and this, and, and they're very, they were very in the office. They were not supportive of travel. My manager was not a, a fan of conferences in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so therefore was also not a fan of paying for me to go to conferences. So I was using vacation time to go to SharePoint Saturdays and go to, uh, Ignite and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I was nominated for MVP a couple times along the way and I just didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't, I f- think I filled out the, the application once, but the other times I just didn't fill it out because I knew that it would not fit my life at the moment. Yeah. I couldn't do the extra things that I would want to do. Yeah. Where I awarded. And now um, post COVID I've moved to Florida. I'm a hundred percent remote so I can, I can work anywhere I want to. Yeah. Um, and I've, my schedule is more flexible. And so now it, it was the right time. And isn't that interesting that I've run into a you know, handful of people that are like, they're doing a lot of the like right activities and they're, they're, they're occasionally speaking at conferences, they're creating content, video and, and blog posts and other, other stuff that are out there. And, and then I are generally considered experts in their realm, but they kind of said like you were doing early on, which was, you know, yeah, but it's not really a fit. Uh, for me to become an MVP. And there's some that even said, you know, I'd have to start doing some things, you know, to better track, to catalog, to, to amplify the, my, the activities. And that's not really my personality and things that are out there. I mean, I, one thing I always say is like, they're, they're, if you're having to add, like th- there are people that are brilliant and they're technically astute and they're out there and they're doing things, but they're really not, focused on sharing with the community they're doing it they're doing it a, a lot but there's like you yeah, know but i'm not really like I, I can't ring my own bell and kind of promote it and out yes. there I, it, you know, and it was it's hard for a lot of people it's difficult for me it was a uh, a change i had to make where i, I had managers at, at past jobs and at microsoft when i was there they just said like you're like i, I was happy go do the work promote like other people the things that they're doing but i wasn't like doing the hey look at me and i had to right. figure out a way to help i had a manager that was very frank with me i appreciated saying you know it, you need to do a better think about making it known the the cool things you're doing like you've got to get that out there and i'm like how do, how do you do that right and well and to your point i was I could see Sharon's career. I could see Sharon's value way better than I could see my own. And so I spent that time building Sharon up and promoting Sharon and, and, and to my own, not, not necessarily to my own detriment, but, but without promoting myself, I was a tag along. If she submitted to present at a session, I would also submit. I'd be like, well, if we're going to that place for that conference, I might as well submit to be a speaker that way I'm included. Um, but there were there were several conferences where the, the organizers would reach out to us and say, hey, we really want you guys to go, but we only have one spot. If I select one of you, will the other one still come out and hang out with us? And and I was very clear with those, those organizers. I'm like, yeah, select Sharon. Hers is going to be a better session and more important. And, you know, it's more important at the time for her to be presenting than it is for me. Yeah. And, uh, and so I was, I was, I, I like to use the word humble for that. You know, I was humble and, and, and on top of that, there's been, jokes when you call out your own humility, it always sounds a little less humble, but yeah, right. I got your point. <laughs> but Kristen, you don't understand. I am the humblest. I am like the most oh, humble. Oh, no, I know you both. I know that. I, no, I like, <laughs> on all seriousness, I know that you, like, it's not a knock on Sharon. If it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah. No, but it, it's, you know, there's, again, like I, I, I get all that. It's, it's still, it, it, it's funny again, talking about um, like the, the path that's out there. It's great to be an MVP and the benefits and things that are around there, around there, but like, but it didn't, my point was like, it's, it didn't change fundamentally the stuff that you were doing. Like 
your right. job situation changed so that you were able to do more community related stuff and have more time to do community related activities, but you were still wired to do community stuff and you were involved right. in there. And I would even put you as one of those people last couple of years, you're in that bucket of people. Um, Cause I categorize people in buckets, Jonathan. So uh, <laughs> no, uh, that you're one of those people that I would be surprised if you probably heard all the time, wait, wait, you're not an MVP already. Cause you're yes. doing a bunch of stuff that people are seeing you at events and you're participating and stuff. So yeah, where there's just a natural where people just assume that you're already an MVP because of the level of your a activity. And right. that it's can be a too. pretty strong indicator that you're on the path to become an MVP. Right. Sharon was at, at MVP summit last year and everyone kept asking where I was at. Yeah. And she's like, you know, he's not an MVP. Yeah. You know, just because I have a, a Twitter handle that's called at whiteboard MVP does not mean I'm <laughs> actually an MVP. No, I love that. Is, is it in your MVP profile? Do you have whiteboard still I up do. there? Yeah. yeah. I do. No, that's and, great. and honestly, so I, I submitted my application split between teams and power platform my day job and most of what I do from a consulting perspective is power platform. But what I present on and no matter how many sessions I submit, the one session that is selected by every court, every organizer is my whiteboard session. <laughs> and as far as I know, I'm the only one that does a Microsoft whiteboard presentation. And, yeah, but and is it so, is it the is it one hundred level whiteboard or is it get up into the three four hundred level whiteboard like the really technical um, whiteboard capabilities? I have two. I have the I have the intro, and usually it's the intro. It's the look. It's a whiteboard. There's pens. There's rulers. There's sticky notes. But then we we get in and we talk about the templates because the templates are really cool. They've got some great templates in there for brainstorming and project management. I, I blogged about that it. years ago yeah. and it still is in like my top 10, top 20 articles on my site every month. Right. Yeah. Um, that said, it's funny because I don't blog about it at all. <laughs> I, yeah. Any of my blog posts are probably something power platform related, mm -hmm. logic related. I have a whole series that I started um, that is basic logic for workflows for beginners because we've got all of these makers now that are business users who don't necessarily have the logic or the background in building code and building applications so I'm, i've created um the first post the the overarching post is out on my blog jonathanmweaver.com and it's workflow logic um, I don't remember the title off the top of my head, but basically from a cooking perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's like, think conditions or if thens. Well, if it needs salt, we add salt. If it doesn't need salt, we don't add salt. Or if it's a beef product, we don't add chicken stock. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and so I've got a whole series of, of logic. Um, it came out of my workflow logic for beginner session that I've presented a couple of times. And I basically broke, broke each one down into its own blog post. And so those will be, those will be coming out soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, so uh, kind of going through, I, I like to ask people like, what, what are you presenting on? We've kind of gone, gone through that. Is there, what other, what other topics are exciting to you with the, with all of the co-pilot? Are you presenting on anything co-pilot related? Um, Sharon and I have a co-pilot session that we're doing at comms V next in Denver. Mm -hmm. I'll um, see you there. Awesome. I have not, I haven't created any other presentations around co-pilot and AI. Um, my passion is the beginners and the makers. Yeah. So I try to do all the 100 level um, intro, how to get started. What, what are you doing? Um, so the the how to get started from a I haven't done this for a year perspective sessions are coming. Yeah, um, so that's, that's a I'm great thinking. that's a great space that is people that had knowledge. A lot of stuff has changed in the last year or two. So if you like are a refresher, so it's a you're going to have a quicker ramp up to the more advanced stuff versus pure you know greenfield beginners. I've right. never done this stuff that, yeah, that's two different groups. 
Yeah. And those are the people I want to help. And I want to talk in their language. That's the problem. When I search for things and I already have an idea of the words I'm looking for, mm -hmm. but not necessarily maybe the exact words, um, I find a lot of technical stuff or a, a lot of stuff that assumes that I already know things. And I want to take it all the way back to zero. Um, Sharon had a, a, a what is SharePoint session back in like 2012, 2013. Yeah. Yep. And she yep. showed it to me and she said, is that, is that, you know, hundred level enough? And I'm like, no, that's still 200 level. I need you to dial it back one more level. And she's like, I don't think I can do that. How do you manage information would be a hundred level. And, you know, in, yeah. in, as a, yeah, I mean, and going through some of the basic terminology, I, right. I was always surprised like, cause doing 100 and 200 level topics. And I used to do that around information architecture, you know, just data management, like the basics around it. Cause I've been in knowledge management most of my career right. and going through some of those fundamentals. And I would still look at some of the feedback and people would be like, you know, it was too fast and it went up and I got confused right away. And you, again, you have to, that's one of the dangers uh, in especially of fellow MVPs is that we, we all chase after and want to talk about the latest, greatest things where the majority of people, they're not, there's plenty of us that are technologists that are interested. We're passionate about technology, looking at all of the new announcements, all the new features. They're at the beginning of their process. They're trying to apply it, you know, to their work. And it's much more basic. And we can't forget about that, that need. They don't have the terminology. They don't like we, it's, uh, I always say that, you know, going into new technology, there's always that first step that I was like, okay, I'm, I understand the definitions, the descriptions. And then that next step, it jumps into you're building logic for your power. Like, right. no. Like, yeah. Well, if I say, okay, then you need a condition with a loop and you want to want it to wait until this thing. To me, that was super, that was a 100 level, right? And to, to someone, you know, that creates videos on power platform for a living, that's a 100 level statement. Right for someone who is an accountant or a customer service rep or a, a chemist, you know, whatever. And, and they're starting to build a, just a basic workflow. They don't know what a loop means or which one I, do I need an apply to each? Do I need to do while, do I need to do until, you yeah. know, and what do those even mean? Yeah. And that's, that's the 100 level. And that's the problem that I see a lot of sessions get advertised as a 100 level and I can walk into those and, and if I'm getting stuck on step two, right. That's a problem. Yep. Well, there's, again, that's, you can learn a lot about gaps to fill. I get blog ideas. I get content and session ideas from sitting in other people's sessions. They're like, well, that wasn't covered. There is a kind of a gap there. And I've got yeah. experience with that. Um, so it's uh, not knocking the people, the sessions that I'm going through. I said, it's just, again, it's, it's a, different subset of the audience that may not have right. their needs met exactly and and i don't want to knock the organizers but a lot of the organizers of a lot of the conferences are in the space some of them are mvps or rds they already know the stuff and so when they see my 100 level sessions come in they just ignore them yeah. i i assume yeah. Because yeah. they want the they want the big good content that's going to drive adoption and drive attendance and you know all of that. And, but they're I feel like personally that they're leaving out a lot of those makers, especially when they come to the big big conferences. Well, you know it's it's so and and just for uh, this is my uh, uh, disclaimer here is that uh, so uh, Jonathan and Sharon are coming and speaking at the Collab Days Utah event that I'm uh, helping organize. And as we went through the session uh, uh, approval process, we tried to think about, depending on what was submitted, almost as a learning path of one, 101 up to advanced. And we're going to try as much as possible. Now, we're, you're also dealing with people's schedules. Like somebody said, hey, I'm flying in in the morning. I need to have right. an afternoon session. Like we were really hoping to put his session in the morning, but we're having to adjust because of that. Right. Um, so you do your best around that, but uh, you you can't always do that as an organizer. You can't, right. you, you, you hope. And that's why when you submit people, if you want to get into the speaking 
uh, uh, ecosystem, never submit just one abstract. Submit right. five or six or whatever that you know a few to the give maximum. the organizers options and yes. have them at different levels on different the different topics around them. So yeah. And Sharon and I have participated in in organizing over 10, 10 right. a lot different conferences. And so we've we've experienced that as well. And and it's it is interesting when you get the committee together to see the different people's uh, I'm gonna say the word bias, you know toward toward the sessions and uh and and i'm i'm always in there looking at i'm looking for those entry entry level yeah um, and we also like to to try and sprinkle in some new speakers too if possible always oh, um, always right yeah we want to give them an opportunity to get in it's not always the same 12 speakers at every conference doing the same 12 sessions at every yep. conference <laughs> yep it's uh well it's it's uh you know conferences are like a box of chocolates Right. You never know what you're going to get. That's right. Well, Jonathan, hey, it was great talking to you. Of course, we we talk on a regular basis, but good seeing you in this format. Thanks for participating. And for folks that want to connect with you, reach out to you. Where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? Um, In social. Where am I active in social? That's a rough question. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) um, you can find me on Twitter. It's J underscore Weaver 74. Or at Whiteboard MVP, um, and and honestly, Facebook is the easiest one. Add me on Facebook; that's the one I check the most. Yeah, um, and Twitter would be my second. Um, definitely add me on LinkedIn. Find me on LinkedIn. I am that that is my least active, other than the you know Insta, TikTok, chat places. Yeah, um, I don't use those at all. We'll have, uh, of course, I have all the links to all of his socials out on the blog post out on Buckley Planet and uh, as well as out on uh, YouTube and on the podcast. So, well, thanks so much, Jonathan, for your time. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Wow. Wow.